Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek podcast. I'm your host, Jory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have Justin Badger, best known for playing Bruno, aka Visor, aka Antinomy, in Yu Gi Oh! 5 Ds and Fortuno in Yu Gi Oh! Zexel. He is also the voice of the Yu Gi Oh! Zexel season 2 theme song Halfway Through Forever, and recently reprised his role as Antinomy for Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for asking me. So, getting right into my questions for you, Justin. First of all, can you tell me how you got into voice acting? Sure. You know, I always wanted to sort of break into it, and I kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of tripped into it. At the time, I was working for an advertising agency uh, for my day job, and um, I was, uh, you know, auditioning a new city to be a stage actor. And um, when they got wind that I was also um, an actor, they asked me to start coming down to their voiceover booth and do some recordings for, you know, like industrials and, and little like fake commercials and things like that just to test test out their scripts. Um, so that's that's kind of how I got started doing it for a bunch of unpaid unpaid work. And then uh, honestly, the work for Yu-Gi-Oh! were my first professional gigs. So can you tell me how you were originally cast as Antinomy in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ts? Yeah, totally. So um, I was I had started auditioning for some Broadway shows and realized that uh, <laughs> while, while I while I could sing, I couldn't sing in the in the sort of, uh, uh, you know, Broadway fashion that you, you need to actually book work. You know, I grew up singing in punk rock bands, which, you know, no one really wanted to hear. Uh, so I uh, I got hooked up with uh, with a gentleman who was a singing coach and that singing coach also turned out to be one of the voice directors at Konami Cross. So after working with him for a couple of months, he brought me in to start auditioning for a few characters here and there. And, and initially it was just a bunch of like bit small one, one episode characters, you know, like dude in the back screaming at the, at the duels that were going on. And then he had me audition for the, uh, the, uh, it was originally the visor role was the first one that I had auditioned for. Yeah. Of course, they later expanded on that character and revealed a lot more about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, when I when I first came into it, it was like a two episode thing, and then all of a sudden he called me up. He's like, "So, it's gotten a bit more complicated." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about that. He has three names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and of course, one of those names, as I'm sure we'll talk about more later, you only really found out about when you got called in for Duel Links. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so were you a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! or were of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s popularity prior to your casting? You know, I I had heard of it before, um, you know, because way back in the day, I think when I was in high school, um, back in the 90s, you know, magic had just come onto the scene. Um, and, uh, me and my buddies, uh, had a, there was like three or four of us who were really into magic the gathering. Right. And so that sort of introduced me to the whole world of these, of these card games. Um, and so then when, you know, when Yu-Gi-Oh came around, I was just aware of it in, in, in the world, but I had never quite, uh, by the time it, w it really like blew up into popularity, I was, you know, deep into college and playing with a punk band and things like that. And I just, you know, saw, caught a few of the, uh, the episodes here and there. I mean, cause all of that, all of the anime cartoon stuff was just like huge. All, you know, you couldn't like, you couldn't throw a stone without hitting a, a new, uh, series or, 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 or anything that, that was coming out of, uh, coming out of that, uh, out of Japan at the time. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, who knows, maybe one day, uh, you know, you'll get to do a punk rock band with using Antinous <laughs> voice, I should say, or something. <laughs> you never know, you never know when that stuff's going to come back to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that would be amazing. I think the Yu-Gi-Oh! fans would like to hear that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so obviously, of course, as you mentioned, when you originally got the role, it was just Visor. There was no Bruno or Antinomy. So uh, when you went into record for for Visor for the first time, what were you told about the character? Well, you know, at at first, I was actually kind of surprised because I, you know, 
I, I thought he was going to have a lot. Well, I mean, he does end up having a larger arc, but I didn't realize it was just going to be a short, such a short amount of time as Visor before all of a sudden it morphed into Bruno. I had no idea that Bruno was even on the horizon. Um, so I thought it was coming in for just like a quick two episode thing, and that and that was going to be it. Um, so I was told that he was this, you know. Again, I'm trying to. God, I'm trying to think back because uh, when I first came in for it, it was like 2011, 2012, I think. Um, and uh, you know, when I first came in. He was like this mysterious guy who just, you know, kind of popped. I think. I think he like initially like came into the picture in a parking garage and was sort of like, you know, kind of this know-it-all dude with this mysterious sort of like. Uh, full of himself kind of like snarky attitude like they were like you really want to be like kind of mysterious and um, and, uh, and 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 like this guy it, it, he's not quite a villain but he's not quite a good guy and we want to know that about him so that was like the biggest thing that I was told like he was more so like in the anti-hero vein you know yeah absolutely that makes a lot of sense and uh, so were you given a lot of freedom with deciding how the character should be played or did the 5 Ds crew already have it in their minds how they wanted him portrayed? You know, they're really good at giving you um, just a basic idea of the characters. Like the the, the team that they have there uh, at Konami Cross working with the 5 Ds and then again in Zexal are, they're awesome. I mean, they know they know exactly the type of character they're looking for, and they're really, really good at giving you specifics. Um, not, but but it's not like not in a way that makes you feel like you're trapped in a cage. You know, like you, there's definitely some freedom in there. Um, they 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 just kind of give you a good description, a really like solid character sketch, and then let you bring yourself to that character. You know, I mean it. it, it, it all things said and done, they they cast you because there's something about your voice that they fit think is going to fit the character, right? So, it just uh, it, it just sort of helped to be able to be given the sketch and then be able to bring myself to it. Yeah, absolutely, that's fantastic. It's always nice to have like a character like that. Like, you, I mean, they give you a bit of an idea about their character, but then they're also like, you know, we trust you. You know that you can bring a good performance to the character, and you know, do your own thing, kind of at times as well. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think the thing that ended up being really cool about it is that you know, after those first two episodes when they called me back and they're like, okay, so we want you to come in. This character has now turned into a new character and it's going to, this character is going to be throughout the pretty much the rest of this season. Then I got to do, you know, essentially like th there was a storyline I could latch onto with that character, which was kind of great, you know, and to be able to sort of see like, as to see him work through the whole, uh, uh, amnesia thing, you know, it, it, it was a pretty cool, it was a pretty cool character to, to sink my teeth into as far as like the first major, role that I had played in a voice acting uh, capacity. Yeah, absolutely, because Pfizer, when he shows up for those two episodes, he's just so mysterious. You yeah. literally don't know anything about him. It's just like, oh, I might have this synchro solution, but you'll have to duel me to find out. <laughs> yeah, and then he disappears for like the rest of the season. You know, it, he's like, he comes in way, way later on. And it's like, well, what? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I know a lot of fans were kind of, like, surprised when it turned out, you know, Bruno and Visor were the same character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what what would you say are the similarities that you see between yourself and Antinomy, if any? <sighs> well, you, know, you know, it's hard because, then it, like, I, when, you know, when I got called back, this was, like, I think we did this back in March or April, yeah, it was the beginning of April that we recorded Antinomy. Um, so I had to keep in mind that, like, they wanted that to be more like Visor. So when I got called in for Visor, I, you know, <laughs> you don't want to say that, like, I, I, you, know, you don't want to say that, like, you, there's this voice in the back of your head that's kind of like, well, I think I'm kind of a badass, you know, but because I don't and I'm not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like the furthest thing from a, 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 a badass. Like, you know, I sit on the couch and I binge watch Netflix all day. You know, I, I eat too much ice cream. That's kind of like uh, how it goes. Uh, but uh, there there was a sort of like uh, attitude about him where he doesn't necessarily reveal all about himself very quickly. Um, and again, you know, Visor, Visor, the Visor Antinomy character was only in two episodes that I 
two no it was like two at the beginning and then two near the end so four four episodes out of a you know out of the run that I recorded for five D's and the rest was all Bruno and I definitely think I was much more close to like the Bruno character than than the others because you know here's this guy who like was smart but was also sort of like he had these moments of kind of being a little bit of a a little bit of a, an idiot every now and then <laughs> like <laughs> but when you first meet him there's that whole thing that I remember like the first time I went in to go uh, read for him he has this confrontation with Jack Atlas and um, like there's this moment where like you know Jack Atlas confronts him because he was like messing with his with his uh, yeah. his racer yeah. and uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and like immediately, like the, the Bruno, like ends up on his hands and knees, like in the background, like saying like three million apologies in like 30 seconds, you know? And so there are those moments where he kind of like, you know, he knows everything and then he forgets everything. And yeah, that's because of his amnesia. And I, I'm, I'm not an amnesiac by any stretch of the imagination, but like, uh, you know, m- my brain doesn't withhold everything that, that, that has, that comes to it these days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I mean, yeah. So that's really interesting as well, because of course, like you, as you mentioned, you only got to do the advisor and Tinami part of the character for four episodes. Like you didn't get to do the whole arc uh, that yeah. the character had on five D. So that does make a lot of sense. That might have been a bit trickier for you to remember that when going in for dual links. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You know, I, I you know I was kind of going back before I did the dual links, and and I was like, whoa, he dies. When did he die? Like I didn't, I didn't die. I didn't get to do the death. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, like, because I remember in our early emails, I was like thinking to myself, how much does Justin know about the about the <laughs> like about the further stories of the show that didn't get dubbed? So I think you probably remember by emailed you the like character biography, including the details of his death. So, oh, that yeah, yeah that helps. That helped quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was just like, I wasn't sure if you knew, but I was just like, just in case. <laughs> just in case I'll send it to you. Um, so what would you say you enjoyed the most about playing uh, Bruno, Pfizer, and Antinomy? I think that the uh, the chance to play three different, essentially three different characters in one, um, because, you know, the Visor and Bruno character were different. And then when I went in for and antinomy for the duel links game that had a little bit of a different flavor than the visor character you know uh like I, you know i in listening back to the visor work that i did if you listen to the to that and the antinomy there's definitely a different my voice is a bit different for, between those two characters so i got the chance to do three different characters in one which is pretty awesome yeah absolutely so of course as we've been discussing you recently reprised antinomy for the ongoing and very popular duel links game how did you find out that the Yu-Gi-Oh crew wanted you to reprise antinomy for duel links you know honestly i just they just i just got an email out of nowhere one day you know uh i saw a, a, an email from my inbox from one of the people who worked on it i was like oh hey it's been a while you know because i i moved from new york to boulder colorado i lived in boulder colorado for like six years and i just recently moved back to the east coast about a just over a year ago and when i moved back they emailed me about this. Um, so it just completely came out of the blue for me. Um, so it was a nice surprise. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's definitely a very nice surprise um, and getting to come back to the character and also, in a way, finally get it out there who actually voiced uh, Bruno Weiser and the Tin Me, because as we also <laughs> discussed in our emails, the fans, or at least, you know, some uh, websites assumed it was a different actor and like here we are getting it out there who really voiced the characters <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm glad to clear up any discrepancies there might be <laughs> yeah absolutely um uh, so um of course what was your experience like returning to voice antinomy uh it was cool you know because um there's a bit more of an edge with antinomy uh, than there was with Bruno, especially Bruno, but even with Visor. I mean, Visor had a little bit of an edge, but there was more. If you listen, if you listen to the Antinomy stuff, there's a bit. He's a bit more low in the register, and a bit. He sounds a bit more of a villain than you might think. Until you get when you uh, get to the point where Antinomy gets defeated, he's a little bit more like encouraging of you of uh, Yusei's process, you know. Um. 
so it was cool to sort of like really like dig into uh, a bit of a challenge or a, a tiny bit with a, a tiny bit of an edge of a bad guy, you know. But I will say it was an ex- it, was, it was an exhausting record. You know, we did it in. I think we did all the all of it in about four hours and like even like we had to do it in two separate two hour blocks because they I, I don't know. I don't know how many people have mentioned this, how many other people you've uh, interviewed from like particularly the Yu-Gi-Oh shows. But these fight sequences like you kind of got to come at it and you're you're doing these lines, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. And they're all really, really, I mean, you, you, you got to chug like, you know, 20 cups of coffee before going into a thing like this. Cause the amount of energy that you have to bring to it is just through the roof. Um, so at the end of it, you know, my, my vocal cords were all torn up cause you know, they wanted a little bit more of a gravel to the voice, you know? So by the end of the thing, you know, you just die and I had a, I could, you can't really speak for the rest of the night, but it's super, super fun. Super fun. And honestly, like the, the, the crazy thing about it is really getting your mouth around the different names of the cards. Cause sometimes I'd be like, what, what tech genus am I on right now? I have no idea. (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot of them. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, but that makes a lot of sense. I mean, cause also there was a lot of shouting in it as well. Like you have to like really imagine you're like, uh, really be in a position where you're being very dramatic, there's a lot on the line, and like so much of the dialogue is the character shouting. So yeah, yeah, I, totally. Yeah, I imagine that was difficult on your voice as well. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, poor baby me, I mean, it, 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 uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to do, you know. Yeah, I mean, it makes it more rewarding when you, like, see the finished, you know, product, whether it's, you know, Antinomy being added to Duel Links, or whether it's, you know, an episode of one of the shows that aired, like, at least after that, you're like, well, it was rewarding, and, like, it was a fun job to do. Yeah, it, you know, it's super it's 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 super cool to see the finished product. And it honestly the the antinomy recording for Duel Links was more difficult because I was recording remotely because we were in, you know, in COVID times. And back when I was recording the uh the 5Ds and the Zexile episodes, um I uh was in the studio so you got to, I got to watch up on up on screen the um the episodes that I was recording for. So you get a feel for, you know, the scene that you're recording and you've got the other voice actors in there and the sound effects and all that kind of stuff. So it's really easier to bring yourself to the, uh, the energy of the action with the dual links. I'm just like in my closet saying these lines. And like my wife is downstairs chuckling to herself. Every time I go like, go tech genius, cyber magician, you know, like I go downstairs and she's just got this big, huge smirk on her face. (laughs) That's amazing. That yeah. I mean, that in fairness, that is one of the things you can't get from like you know doing in the studio because like the other you know uh, the crew members are like yeah you know we get it that's you know another of the you know cards with a voice line for whereas like your wife probably doesn't have any clue what's going on and it's just oh like, she has oh, no idea it yeah just sounds hilarious <laughs> to her <laughs> yeah so it's all a foreign language you know <laughs> yeah absolutely um. Was there any hesitation in returning to reprise Antinomy, or did you just say yes right away? Oh, no, no hesitation at all. I mean, this I love doing this kind of work, so I jump at the chance to do anything, you know. I, I, I and it's, I, I got, I, I don't know. I just feel really fortunate to be able to to do any of this kind of work in this capacity. It's, it's, it's too much fun. That's fantastic. And- so how did working on the Duel Links game compare to working on the show's 5Ds and Zexal? Like, similarities, differences, etc.? Um, I think the, the biggest difference was, the, like, the... Because I had never I had never played the Duel Links game, um, so the the lack of storyline, just for me, I had no idea what the storyline was, I didn't know what the setup was, I didn't know how the game worked. Um, and I had a little bit more uh, context in recording the shows, you know, recording uh, um, 5Ds and and Zexal. Yeah, of course. It, so, of course, going back to something I t- brought up earlier, but, um, of course, going into the Duel Links recording, you, like, you didn't know the finished story of 5Ds, that, like, there were more episodes that weren't dubbed, you didn't even know that Bruno and Visor had a third name in Antinomy, so what was that like when you found out from the Duel Links crew about the, uh, 
about Antinomy and his like few his other stories that weren't dubbed. Like, were you like shocked or anything? Well, yeah, it was like you know when I initially got the e- email, they're like, so we want you to come back and record uh, the visor role, but he's not called Visor anymore, and it's not Bruno. So we don't want to record Bruno either. He's called Antim- Antinomy now, and I was like, the what? Like, <laughs> he's he's different. Uh, so they had a, you know, so then they, you know, when I got on the phone, um, when I got on the, you know, the record session with them, they had to, they took the chance, the time to actually explain through to me. Cause I didn't, I didn't have, um, after I finished recording five D's, they didn't give me, you know, it, it stopped early. I mean, as, 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 as you know, like the dub stopped earlier than the actual series did. So yeah, absolutely. But what of the untold uh, Antinomy and Bruno stuff from the episodes that weren't dubbed would you have most liked to du- to uh, record if the dub had continued? I, you know, I would have really liked the chance to record the moment when when uh, Antinomy actually reveals himself as Bruno to the crew, you know? Because, I, I don't know, I just think that revelation would have been really cool to do. Yeah, absolutely. It was certainly quite a revelation for you, anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah. Um, so, as you touched on earlier, and it was one of the things I found most interesting in your portrayal of Antinomy and Dulix, well, of course, he does sound quite a bit like he did in the show as Bruno and Visor, but he also has quite a gruffer voice, like, uh, you kind of said yourself villain or anti-hero-like, which I'm sh- I agree with, and I'm sure most of the Yu-Gi-Oh fans would agree with as well. He did sound a lot more villain-like in the game. Um, so what was the process behind Antinomy having a gruffer voice for Dueling? Was that something the Yu-Gi-Oh crew wanted, or was it something you wanted to do? No, they were they were kind of like, we want to explore a little bit more of a of like a, like a robotic voice. And then, so we tried a little bit of robotic stuff, but it just wasn't quite working out. And then we were like, you know, and then, you know, Again, like the director that I've that I've worked, I've only worked with one voice director there at the at the the Konami Cross Crew. He is just fantastic at pulling the performance out of you that uh, that they need to get. And so we just tried a bunch of different stuff to finally see what stuck. And what really stuck was that sort of lower, sort of simmering, gruff voice. You know, um, he, and and he literally just said that he's like, what if we tried something where you're you've got a little bit more of a of a scratch to your voice, and we give him a little bit more of a, of a little more of a sharper edge, and that you know it just became a bunch of trial and error till we finally got it, and and I think it took maybe like you know 15, 20 minutes of experimenting with different voices, and then once we got it, then we were off to the races, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, it sounded fantastic in the end. Like I I love it. Like it sounds really oh. good. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed it Yeah, absolutely, like, I keep, like, re-listening to these, like, videos that people have put together, like, compilations online of, like, all the cards and, you know, stuff that Antinomy has dialogue for it, like, it sounds really good <laughs> Awesome, awesome Yeah, um, and lots of great Tech Genus cards he has uh, dialogue for, of course Yeah um, yeah. Did you know if the decision to give Antinomy a gruffer voice was like a nod to 5Ds in a way, like this is what he might have sounded like in the final episode if they were dubbed, or was it just completely for Duel Links? No, I think he would have given a little bit more of a nod. You know, I mean, because th- there's a it's it it follows it follows the further evolution of that character, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, he go starts his visor, goes to Bruno, and then becomes yet another sort of version of himself near the end. So I would assume that like we would have come to something similar to that at least. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so of course, I mean, Bruno, visor, Antinomy. I was about to, you know, say all of them, and like I was just like, which one am I gonna settle on? You know, I'm just gonna say all of them again. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so as well as playing Antinomy in Five Ds, you also played Fortuno in Zexel, another great character. How were you cast as Fortuno? That was just one of those things where you know they had, uh, and uh, you know they had a they had this character pop up. I had auditioned for the character. I think the character's name is is it Astral? Yeah, Astral. Yeah, so I had I had auditioned to play him, um, and didn't get it, and so they just kept wanting to bring me in for different to, to audition for some different characters, and we settled on Fortuno, um, just because you know we they they asked like how like how crazy of a, a, a of a of a voice could I put behind it, and we got really weird with that one. That was that one was honestly like recording Fortuno was probably one of my one of my favorite things I recorded for for that uh, for that company. That's amazing, and as well as with uh, Bruno, Visor, and Antinomy, 
another character that some sites, you know, mistakenly attributed incorrectly to another yeah. actor um, who I've heard didn't even work on Zexel, so uh, <laughs> that was quite incorrect, but at least we're getting, you know, you know, it ain't there more and more who, you know, actually voiced these characters. Um, yeah, so shrouded in mystery. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there was a bunch of other uh, actor names on the credits of the shows that are still mysterious, and I'm going to try and get the answers to as many as I can. Um, so, better watch out, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, which would you say between... Um, Bruno Weiser and to me and Fortuna was the more challenging the voice. I think the Fortuna one was. It took a while to get that one down because they're you know it was such it, it they, he was such an animated. It, I feel it's redundant saying an animated character for an animated series, but uh, he, he was he had so much uh, of an interesting character to him. You know, I remember we had this sort of like thing where the director was like, "What if we like." Give, give him a little bit more of a Hannibal Lecter feel if Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter did, just did like a mound of cocaine, you know? Like, because, <laughs> <so, laughs> uh, you know, he had, he, he, like, the, I think we spent, like, at least, I had to come in and do Fortuno in a couple of sessions because it was just too tiring. I mean, I, I literally think I went in there one day and just did like 45 minutes of cackling, you know? Wow, that's amazing. And I think that's one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of a Yu Gi Oh character. Oh, <laughs> here's Hannibal Lecter on cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just picture that and, you know, go with that for Fortuno. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, exactly. Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and which character between the four did you enjoy voicing more? I think I, you know. It's it's I it's hard to say which one I enjoy voicing more because you know with Bruno I had a huge story arc to to really like dig into and it was it was fun to do, but Fortuna was just so out there. I I I, I love the sessions for Fortuna because it was just so much fun. You know it, it's really hard not to enjoy doing a character like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things I think is absolutely amazing and really cool as well is like you're not just an actor, you're also a singer and song writer as well, and you actually are the voice of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal Season 2 theme song, Halfway Through Forever. I think you're, like, the first person I've discovered who actually voiced one of the theme songs. I'm just, like, <laughs> I thought that was so amazing when I found out. So, uh, how were you hired to be the voice of the song, and what did you enjoy the most about recording Halfway to Forever? Well, I think with that one, they hired me just because, you know, like I like, like I said earlier, um, the director that I worked with was also my singing coach. Um, and he was I started working with him because I was uh, I was in the round of auditions to join the original cast of the Green Day musical American Idiot. Um, and, uh, you know, so I so he knew I had this punk background. So when they needed to record the Halfway to Forever song, he was like, hey, what do you think about coming in and just trying this out? I was like, yeah, sure. So, you know, I came in, we did one session and then he sent it to the, they have a guy there who, uh, at least they did at the time who wrote a lot of the, a lot of different theme songs for the company, you know? And so he gave my, gave my audition a listen. They were like, let's do it. So they brought me in for another session and we, uh, we banged it out in a couple of hours. Um, it was fun to kind of like get back to that, you know, it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was getting back, getting back to my roots, you know, just like, uh, popping on a little bit of that pop punk sound um it was pretty fun yeah that's amazing and getting back to your roots in the pop and getting to go into the Yu-Gi-Oh studio again because of course you'd recorded Fortuno much earlier in the show yeah yeah and what was the process like behind the recording of Halfway to Forever um you know it uh I mean, it's basically the same. It wasn't that much different from recording uh, uh, one of the characters on the show. You know, you go in there, they give you the music to listen to. The uh, they have a backing track for the vocals that you've the, that sings the melody you're going to be singing, and then you just essentially just we just try to do it. We we did the full song a couple of takes, and then you go back section by section and sing like you know the verse a couple of times and the chorus a couple of times, another verse a couple of times, um, and just because the energy of the song, you've really got to like. You really kind of like got to get up underneath it from your guts, you know, because uh, there's no there's no way to there's no way to sing a song like that um, half ass. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
What would you say are your favorite memories from your time working on 5D Zexel and Dual Links? You know, I think the biggest thing that's a lot of fun with that is the people who worked worked there. Uh, you know, the people you work with, the team is really awesome. You know, there's not a single person on on that uh, on that team that I wasn't happy to see every time I went in there um, they're all super nice they're really into the job and just like getting the best uh, getting the best uh, records and product that they can but they also have a really great sense of humor about it I mean everyone's really good about like recording these shows and realizing that like we you've got to put a lot of a lot of energy and sometimes a lot of seriousness into some in, into some uh, pretty uh, pretty interesting and goofy situations you know like you have to like we all kind of like understood with like a good a good solid like respectful smile on our face that like we learned the second language of the cards you know and uh and realized that like there's a huge fan base out there for it who love this this video game so like you know that i just think that like the amount of respect and reverence there is for the game and the way that everybody treated each other inside that uh, inside that recording studio was probably the best part about it yeah that's fantastic and what would you say were the biggest challenges you faced working on 5D Sexel and Dual Links? Honestly, the biggest challenge was just having the energy to do it. You know, like it takes, I don't think a lot, I don't think, uh, I, I, I'm not sure people realize how, how, uh, how, um, let's see, how should I put this? I, I don't know if anyone realizes just how much focus and energy actually takes to record those lines particularly in the duels you know in the high in the high stakes energy scenes because just the the style of those sort of animation shows are so it's so through the roof right like it's it, like nothing is nothing is small the scale is not small at all so you really have to go in there and like it's it, it, it kind of like put forth a superhuman effort to uh to uh to, to do these records yeah absolutely and which would you say has been the most challenging role in your career so far? Um, you know, I, I've only, so when I moved to Colorado, I took ser six years off. Uh, I took, I took six years away from uh, doing any sort of acting whatsoever. And only since coming back to, um, the, uh, the East coast have I, you know, I just got myself a new voiceover agent. So I've started to do a lot more auditions for cartoons, uh, for Disney plus and DreamWorks and things like that. Um, so, uh, really like, you know, a lot of my experience in the, in the voiceover world was at the, uh, the, with the Yu-Gi-Oh shows. Um, and I, I do think that the most challenging character I did there was, was the Fortuno character. Um, there was just, you know, it was, it was, there was a lot to kind of, it was, it was fun because we got to create this really wild and weird character and, uh, it, there's a lot of energy involved in it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my final question for you, Justin, do you have any upcoming acting, singing, or songwriting roles or any other projects that you would like to talk about? Well, you know, my, uh, my wife and I have a band together that that's been our main creative project for the past six years. Uh, we're called the Fremonts and, uh, uh, before COVID hit, we were actually supposed to come out to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this summer, um, to do our show. We have a cabaret that we wrote and produced that it's had about three sold out runs over here in the States. But uh, so obviously that's that's on hold. Um, but we will, you know, providing everything uh, they figure out how to make it work next year. We're on hold to come back and actually perform it in 2021 over in Edinburgh. Um, so that there's that. We're also, um, you know, we we're always writing new music. We're already always like figuring out, you know, now we're like learning how to home produce music and things like that. That's where a lot of my energy is. Outside of that, I'm, you know, doing like, you know, anywhere from five or six auditions a week, uh, hoping to book that next gig. So uh, at the moment, there's no gig on the horizon, but uh, I'm sure it's only a matter of time till another one comes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully you and your wife do get to uh, bring your band to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Like that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so that's all of my questions for you, Justin, but we also have a few questions from some of our listeners, if that's okay. Yeah, it's totally great. So, for Mark has a couple of questions for you. First of all, in regards to recording episodes of 5Ds in which Bruno appears in different forms like as Bruno and Visor in the same episode, uh, did you record all of Bruno's lines first before recording Visor's lines, or did you go back and forth between the two? 
thankfully we recorded them separately uh <laughs> otherwise it gets a little schizophrenic right like you like I, you know i've done some audiobook recordings where i go in there and you have to keep in keep like five different characters straight and then at a certain point you realize you're div- delivering half a li- line of dialogue in the wrong character voice you know so we did bruno first and then i think we came back in and did visor yeah absolutely i think that makes a lot of sense particularly for an anime since i mean not only do you have to record the lines but you have to like try and match the lip flaps as well so yeah totally yeah, totally yeah. I, I think it's i think it's really impressive you know when there are shows where uh, one person who's doing multiple characters does you know them back and forth but i think with an anime in particular it just you know makes so much more sense to record them separately yeah, I mean, you look at shows like Rick and Morty. Doesn't uh, I think his name's Justin Roiland? He does both Rick and Morty. Yeah, I think so. Which is which is insane. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Mark's second question: Love the halfway to forever song you did the voice of for Sexel. It really fit Yuma's personality and journey. From a fan standpoint, what are some of your favorite opening themes in animation? <laughs> you know, I'm probably dating myself here, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I have always loved the Animaniacs theme song um, from, uh, gosh, from back in the early 90s. Also, there was the X-Men, the X-Men animated series. That theme, that, theme, that theme song is awesome. I think that was from like the mid 90s or something like that. But that theme song is rad. There's no v- vocals to it or anything like that. But that whole opening sequence is dope. Um, and, you know, I grew up again, this is, this is dating myself, but like I grew up in a Disney family. So like for me, for my money, nothing beats like the 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 like old school disney afternoon theme songs like ducktales chippendales rescue rangers and gummy bears like those three uh theme songs uh take me back yeah absolutely all amazing theme songs um so and band 23 would like to know how did you feel about being contacted to reprise an anime role and then tinami for dual links a character you hadn't voiced in around a decade i thought it was cool you know uh, because you know, the thing I thought was really cool about it is that we came into it and didn't try to completely replicate Visor. And and I think I had the ability to do that because I hadn't we didn't complete uh, his story arc in the in the English dubs. Um, so it, it was nice. And it's cool to be a, be in a video game, you know, like I, I downloaded it and started playing it so I could uh, like it's going to be a little bit weird. <laughs> When I get to the point where I'm playing myself, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, w- once you do, once you do get to play Antinomy, you j- I know you're going to have so much fun with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, how many people really can say that they're playing themselves in a video game? I mean, that's just, that's just one of those amazing things. Weird, but amazing at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit odd for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's all of the questions for you today, Justin. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rory. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. And hopefully we can talk again sometime. Yeah, yeah. Great. So I look forward to talking to you again, Justin. Thanks again for joining us today and take care. Bye. All right, you too. Bye now. Time to wrap up today's show. Make sure to check out our podcast links. Check out our website, website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everythinggeekpodcast. Email us at the following email, everythinggeekpodcast at gmail.com. Check out my Instagram, www.instagram.com slash Rory Williamson. Check out Justin Badger's website, www.justinbadger.com. And check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from, www.channel1138.com. Geek set if you want. So what had happened with 5Ds was the, it was being produced during like the beginning of the huge recession that we had here in the U.S. And, um, um, you know, a lot of these things are probably, 
I, pretty mundane, but I guess if you, you know, if, if one day a, a new actor is on the show and you're like, who is that actor? Why is he playing Crow? Um, yeah, I mean, the sort of the, the short.